Ladies and gentlemen, up next, uh, excuse me, up next, uh, I'd like to introduce Jason Cook, systems engineer at VeriSign. Give him a big round of applause. Hey, everybody, how you doing this morning? Good. Yeah, it's early. I know. I was telling Mike, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing to be first one on the, the last day. I guess we'll find out, right? It's actually nice to be presenting to you guys. I guess you're kind of my my people, my monogamous people. Uh, even when I present this in the company, everybody's like, monitoring is great, fantastic. But I'm among my people now, so that's awesome. So I wanted to talk to you today about Nagios and Mod Gearman. Uh, we're kind of a large scale environment, VeriSign. Um, if you didn't know who we are, we, are. Uh, we used to be an SSL company. We're not anymore. Uh, we're a DNS company now. We manage .com and .net registrations, and we also have two of the DNS root servers. So we manage that infrastructure. So brief history of, of uh, Nagios at VeriSign. Uh, we started off with a passive environment, uh, typical white paper NSCA. Uh, it's a three-tier setup. Here's a diagram. Uh, three-tier setup, remote systems that run a Nagios daemon, run their services, send the results back by way of an intermediary uh, Nagios server up to our central Nagios servers. Uh, it's, it was in place for several years and actually still is. We're still migrating. Uh, it's pretty stable, though it does need some babysitting and hand-holding. It's very heterogeneous, so we have a ton of OS versions, uh, many Nagios versions, all the way from one up to three. Uh, all of our notifications actually aren't handled necessarily by Nagios. They're uh, just SNMP traps out to an external uh, event management system. And all of our performance and trending is actually sent off somewhere else, too. So we don't manage that in Nagios with PNP or anything. So here's sort of a simplified architecture. So one thing to note is um, I don't know if people do this at other distributed uh, environments, but for some measure of redundancy, uh, let's just say we have two distributed Nagios servers per environment. Uh, each system connected sends to both. Um, so that creates something of a split monitoring network, right? Like where we'll end up with the same monitoring result in two places, and then it ends up at uh, redundant central Nagio servers. So we actually have to do deduplication of notifications as well, which is a gigantic hassle. Um, so here's some challenges, and actually I'll go back to this slide real quick. Um, one challenge is when we're managing this layer, or even this layer, but in particular this one, um, if we add another server, we have to reconfigure all of these systems to use it. So uh, if we replace one with a new, new name or IP or whatever, these have to be configured. And those are, these systems are managed by many operations teams. So coordinating that is a challenge, to say the least. Um, if we add another one at this level, we have to reconfigure all of these, which is less challenging, but still a pain. Uh, because everything above it architecturally has to know about what's being changed. So our challenges, as I mentioned, the scaling. Um, and then, so for load balancing, we have to, uh, we have to remove those freshness checks. Um, it's such a hassle otherwise if we don't. Um, I, I can't even say how, how much of a challenge that is, freshness in general. Um, more freshness checking means more Nagios forking, and forking means sadness. Uh, it, at least in Nagios 3, it, it's, it's bad in a large environment when Nagios has a lot of work to do. Uh, it can't fork fast enough. It can't, and the forks are quite large, so they use lots of memory. They use uh, lots of CPU. So you have to offload as much as possible. 
And in a passive architecture with freshness checking, you inadvertently end up with an active environment anyway because you have to check to see if the results have actually been received. So whether you intend to or not, you're going to have an active architecture. Uh, we actually did something to mitigate this, though. Uh, in combination with live status, I wrote a plugin so that, for going back to this slide, at this layer, I'd run one active service for each of this level systems to see how many stale services there are, so that, and then disable internal Nagios freshness checking across the board so that we have one active service that will alert to say, hey, we haven't received anything. And then same on this layer. I'd run that check against these. So that, in a lot of ways, mitigates the freshness issue, but it's still a pain because we have to do that. So another one is lack of centralized scheduling. Um, so think of the Nagios UI. You have a user that wants to run a plugin immediately. Uh, they can't do that in a passive architecture, at least not simply because we don't run uh, UIs on every system. We're only running the daemon. We only run the UIs on the central Nagios layer. So I also have to support Nagios builds for all of our platforms, which is a pretty big build. Uh, that's a pain. Uh, since we're using NSCA, we also need libmcrypt, which is not standard with anything. So that's yet another package to maintain. And also on some platforms like Solaris and AIX, it's not easy to build. And then on top of all of that, we need the custom code here to handle the intelligence of when networks go down, and then also to queue the NSCA results and send them in bulk. Um, there's a project out there called OCP Daemon uh, that does something similar to what we do, but ours is kind of custom to our environment. Uh, in particular, we do detection to see if the remote side is down. If not, go to another place. Um, we just have more logic in there. So with all these challenges, we've got to find something else, right? So active monitoring. So GearMan. Uh, it's an open source uh, job server allowing Nagios or really anything to create a job and to have a worker satisfy that job. Uh, it integrates with the mod GearMan NEM module. And we're using NRPE on the remote sides. Uh, Merlin is also in place. Uh, Merlin uh, is written by OP5. Uh, it allows you to do load balancing on the Nagios layer. Here's another sort of simplified architecture diagram of it. So we have our central Nagios servers, again, balanced by Merlin. So scheduling is shared, uh, talking to multiple GearMan servers. And those GearMan servers are talked to by all the workers. The workers reach out to the remote systems by NRPE, check NRPE. So a new thing for us is we're running everything in VMs. Uh, before we had lots and lots and lots of hardware. Um, lots of hardware. So everything's in VMs now, ESX. Uh, we're running Nagios 341, uh, Merlin 115, which at the time, uh, as of a few months ago, uh, that was the most recent version that supported Nagios 3. Uh, I understand there's a newer version now, so we'll probably be upgrading to that. Uh, and then Mod Gearman 126, Live Status, that's a big one. I mentioned it before. Uh, probably the greatest NEM module of all time. It is so useful. If you're not using it, you should. Uh, because there's so much information you can get out of it in real time, too. Uh, the Merlin setup is a simple peer-to-peer, -peer, or at least I thought it was simple. Talking to Andreas, I guess most people don't use it like this. Uh, but we spread our Nagios layer very wide to share the scheduling load. Um, and I guess most people don't do that. Uh, Mod GearMan NEB module configured to talk to multiple GearMan servers. Uh, so.